To understand assembly, we have to understand a little bit how the computer is made. So the question, what is a computer? Of course, in ATL, the air fashion style, we don't need an university computer architecture course to write our assembly lines. If you want to dig down, I will leave some links in the description, of course. Let's get a simple visualization of a computer, namely the things we need to write assembly code. Basically for us, the computer is memory, you know very well, right? I'm talking about the RAM, which is just a giant array of bytes. Then we have the CPU, which is the actual brain of the computer. Here is where the actual calculations are taking place. Then we have input devices, for example, the keyboard or the mouse. And of course, we have output devices, for example, the screen. So to make an explain like a five, we can say that the keyboard and the mouse are like a pencil and the RAM is like a notepad, an electrical notepad in which we can write stuff. Of course, I'm talking about binary numbers, but with binary numbers, we can encode whatever we want. So let's assume I want to get the result of one plus two. Well, I will write in my electrical notepad one plus two. These values are gonna get inside the CPU, namely inside some registers, to be processed by the LU, the arithmetic logic unit, which is just a calculator. I will get the actual results, right? And this is gonna be displayed in the actual display. This is very superficially what is going on with your computer. And that's the view that is very helpful with assembly code. So uh, a way to say what a microprocessor is, is to tell you what's inside a computer. So a computer forever has classically had five pieces. There's input and output, which kind of naturally, as you'd expect, is input is like speech or typing and output is displays. There's a memory and like the name sounds, it, it remembers things. Uh, so it's uh, integrated circuits whose job is you put information in and when you ask for it, it comes back out. That's memory. And the third part is the processor. <laughs> Uh, where the team microprocessor comes from. And that has two pieces as well. And that is the control, which is kind of the brain of the processor and the what's called the arithmetic unit. It's kind of the brawn of the computer. So if you think of the, as a human body, the arithmetic unit, the thing that does the number crunching is the, is the body and the control is the brain. So those five pieces, input, output, memory, arithmetic unit and control. Here I created a little model in Figma that we are gonna use as you can see here we have the RAM which is just a very big array in every slot we can put a byte a byte is just a chunk of bits of course in real computers I'm talking about transistors you can assume that one byte is eight light bulbs that can be turned on and off these patterns namely these 256 patterns mean something to you you decide the meaning of these patterns here you have the stack this is where the stack is gonna unfold basically when your programs are running you have activation records that are gonna unfold in these places here at the very bottom you have the code text segment in which you have your actual instructions we will see about them later and here you have the actual CPU, right? We get some registers here, EAX, ECX, EBX. We are gonna understand about this naming, what is going on, the actual ALU represented as a simple calculator. And here you get some other fancy registers, which are part of the control unit, which is the brain of the CPU, if you want. On the contrary, the ALU is like the muscle of the CPU, if you want to make an analogy with a human body. The control unit is the boss, is deciding which operation has to be performed. Thanks to these specific registers and other pieces of hardware, this is an extreme simplification to get the point across. And this is the worker, is the one that is gonna perform the actual operations. So this is the view, this is the view of our CPU, and we're gonna work with this. So what can I do with this machine? Well, I can create programs, of course, applications. It simply means creating automatic procedures. Of course, I'm talking about algorithms for solving problems. Problems such as adding one plus two, as we saw. Other problems such building artificial intelligence, you know? <laughs> the spectrum is pretty big. 